Good morning, good morning, good morning. Well, we are on the move today, guys. Uh, yesterday was a long, 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 long day. Honestly, it's been long, long, long days uh, since whew, last week sometime. But uh, the fishing trip is finally over, and my parents are actually headed back to Florida today. And I want to thank all of you guys that joined my mom last night on her live on her channel. She absolutely had a blast. I think there were 600 and something of you guys in there for her live, first live on Come On Mountain. And uh, she had a blast. She's very thankful. Uh, I was able to do a little bit of YouTube University last night with my mom and kind of help her out a little bit. Uh, with some editing stuff and setting stuff up and learning how to do lives and all of that other stuff. So that, that was very rewarding and uh, you guys were a big part of that. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. And for all the people that went over there and subscribed to her channel, Learn With Nana, um, thank you so much. And I, her channel will be in the description of this video. So if you have not went over there and subscribed yet, make sure that you do. She is a very, very crafty, crafty person and uh, can cook some good groceries as well. And very creative. Um, it's probably where I get my creativeness from. And uh, she has a whole crafty house, guys. So if you're into that kind of stuff and good groceries and all of that, it's definitely the channel that you want to go to. And she's got that uh, southern... Uh, sense of humor and a uh, twang to her and stuff which makes it even better so definitely go check her out uh, I'm on the way to town today it's a gloomy day it's supposed to rain today and uh, I've been non-stop for a couple of weeks now and whenever I get like that some of the uh, domestic chores and stuff kind of fall behind as you can see back there I got my comforter and a whole bunch of clothes in the back. I got two laundry baskets. I'm washing my sheets and pillowcases and all that. I need some new pillows too. I've had those pillows forever. They ain't been working like they should be working. So uh, I'm going to go to Walmart and do some grocery shopping, uh, get some pillows and wash my clothes and all of that stuff today. I also need to get uh, some food for the animals. The goats need food. The clips need food. I need more rabbit food, hay. All that other stuff. And the goats, ever since I moved them, the last place they was at, they never got out once. And where I moved them at this time, they have literally, they get out in 10 minutes after I put them in there. Um, so right now, the goats are just running around the mountain. Uh, they're all staying up there by the cabin and stuff and eating and stuff, so I'm not sweating it too too much. Um, but yeah, they're, they're not scared of that fence when it's not zapping the way that it's supposed to zap and uh, Eclipse is being a good girl and staying in there but the goats are not so I think the problem is is, is with that Premier One one of the downsides to the Premier One if it's not in a big open field where it gets plenty of sunlight and all that other stuff then it doesn't work that great because of all the brush and stuff grounding out and stuff which I have the fence line cleared y'all seen that on the last video on Come On Homestead um but it's sunlight, right? And also, with it being close to winter time and stuff, the sun is further to the south, and uh, where the trees and all that stuff are is further towards the north, so it's not getting the sunlight that it needs to charge the batteries. So what I'm gonna do is uh, go to Harbor Freight, and I'm going, I, I got a couple of things to get there, but I'm gonna get a spool of wire with a clamp and make a longer lead for the solar part of the fence so I can put it out in the opening a little bit better. I don't know what kind of uh, amp draw, you know, I'm gonna lose or whatever, but right now it's gotta be better than what I'm getting. And I might even get a trickle charger and run an extension cord out there so when the generator is running, it can help keep that battery charged uh, just to get me through winter. Um, it's the first winter with the Premier One fence, so I'm kinda, learning as I go type thing, but I definitely got to be able to keep them in the pen. And uh, it's just, it's unfortunate that I literally just moved them uh, Thursday and they've been out of the pen more than they've been in it. 
so I got to get that addressed so I'm gonna pick up some things today to try to alleviate that problem I uh, also got a couple of gas cans with me because I'm gonna go to Russellville and gas is like 40 cent cheaper a gallon there so go ahead and top off my cans and all that other stuff uh, but man it's been a whirlwind of a couple of weeks let me tell you uh, that trip was man one of the best times I've had in recent memory for sure and I can't wait to do it again and then to come back and to be able to show my parents around where I live and show them all the beauty it's a beautiful time of year it's beginning of fall and everything's starting to change colors and stuff so they picked a great time to come the weather was amazing for their trip it wasn't too hot and everything and uh, I wish I could have stayed a little longer uh, there was a lot more I would have loved to have shown them but I uh, just didn't have time so I just kind of gave them the highlight tour uh, yesterday we went to the 41.36 and uh, they got to meet Mel and Gary and Anthony and Roxanne and kind of see what they got going on over there because they watched them as well and uh, they was real excited about meeting them and uh, then last night <clears throat> if you did miss the live uh, I did a fish fry on all the fish that I caught over the weekend uh, my parents have never eaten freshwater trout because we're from down south and there's not really freshwater trout down there um, the only trout that we've caught was like in salt water so, and I've never cooked it either. So it turned out amazing. I fried some and I grilled some so we could kind of get the best of both worlds. And then uh, I invited uh, Mike with the Drifting Dreamers uh, up and the kids and Lissa. And uh, I also cooked shrimp because not all of them like fish. So I cooked shrimp as well. I fried some shrimp and I also grilled some shrimp. I did the same on both. I was gonna try to film a Fired Up Friday with that, but it was just too much going on. The outdoor kitchen, it was not 100% set up and ready for uh, an event like that. Um, so it was a little bit of a pain in the booyakaka to pull that off. So I wasn't able to film, and also with the live going on at the same time and stuff, it would have been impossible. Um, Thanks to Mike with Drifting Dreamers. He was a stand-in for me uh, for a lot of that live because I was cooking. And we all know once you start frying uh, fish and stuff like that, you have to stay on it. And if you're not careful, you'll burn your grease and all of that other stuff. So uh, he helped host my mom's uh, first live on Come On Mountain. And I kind of popped in and out uh, the best that I could to be able to keep everything moving and flowing. But it turned out amazing amazing the food was great i haven't done a fish fry in i mean years i was back in florida the last time that i threw a fish fry so um i actually used to cook wash dishes and wait tables and stuff when i was a teenager at a seafood restaurant and uh yeah so i do have experience doing it and funny thing is is I ended up owning that restaurant later on in life and turned it into a sports bar because it was shut down and the building was available and everything else so um, that was the same building that I ended up turning into my sports bar many 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 years later so it was kind of like full circle before I went to college to do IT so uh, yeah a little nostalgia and stuff last night because we talked about that a little bit and uh just a good time but yeah today is just uh running errands and stuff like that and uh, just doing some of the domesticated stuff you know that i gotta do um you know so i don't get behind on things and uh i'm also gonna look to uh, get another set of, set of sheets and uh stuff comforter for my bed so i can swap it out i normally like to have at least two and uh and i did but the other ones is pretty old my second set is really old actually and uh they just don't have the comfort that they used to have i also got my tires and uh stuff rotated and balanced on my truck before the trip the fishing trip and because i i get this vibration in between about 50 to 60 50 to 65 in my truck and uh it's still doing it i was hoping that the balancing would fix that it was off about two degrees did not fix it um, and I also checked the U-joints 
why they had it up on the lift because I was thinking it might be the U joints as well. But that ain't it either. So I'm thinking that it might be in the transmission or something like that. And I hope not. Uh, this truck's only got 54,000 miles on it. it. Shouldn't be having transmission issues already. But uh, something's definitely going on with it. So I'm definitely going to have to uh, figure that out. I've been driving the Jeep as much as I can on trips like this where I got to get a lot of hay and gas and stuff like that. It's not going to fit in the Jeep. And I'm not going to haul gas in the Jeep anyways and get that gas smell all up in the Jeep because the interior of that Jeep is actually pretty nice. Um, so in this particular situation, um, I'm having to drive the truck, but uh, I'm going to have to get that fixed and looked at. Uh, I don't know what it is. The truck's not under warranty, I don't think. So hopefully it doesn't cost me a whole lot of money. And it's a little frustrating, I'm not going to lie, because at 54000 I shouldn't be having issues at all. So, um, I paid quite a bit of money for this truck, and uh, one of the reasons why I do do payments on trucks, because I didn't get my first truck until I was like a new truck, and until I was like 34, 35 years old. I drove old vehicles my whole life, and a mechanic, and fixed the things. I'm actually quite the mechanic um, when I want to be. I don't like mechanic but I am pretty good at it. Um, <clears throat> Y'all haven't really seen me do a whole lot of that, but uh, I used to race Mustangs and stuff uh, when I was younger and, you know, drove hot rods and all that other stuff, and you can't do that kind of stuff if you don't know how to work on cars. Um, so I would s snatch a transmission out, put a new transmission and clutch and all that stuff in, and a couple hours at night, you know, to be ready to race. Uh, at the track, you know, the next day, stuff like that. So, I don't mind mechanicing whenever it comes to like upgrading stuff. I hate mechanicing to try to find out what's wrong with a vehicle and fix a broken vehicle. It's totally different things. I have full intentions on some point in life once I uh, get my shop built and stuff like that. I always wanted to do an old Mustang and uh, like a 65, 60, what is it, four and a half, something like that is that I used to drive Mustangs when I was younger. But as I've gotten older, that dream's kind of changed a little bit. And now I think I want to do like an old Ford truck, you know, and have the patina look and all that other stuff. Yeah, I don't know if y'all can hear the vibration, but like right now I'm going 62 miles per hour and it's constantly vibrating. So, I don't know. Hopefully it's not the transmission, that's all I can say. But it does pull a lot of weight with Uber and stuff like that. Um, I have thought about maybe next year trading it in and uh, getting to F-250 again like I used to have. Something that's a little bit more built for pulling that kind of weight. Because uh, these small F, F... I was about to say uh, F-150s or whatever. But these small 1500s and stuff, they're just not built to pull that kind of weight and stuff. Which I don't pull it often. I've only pulled the tractor a couple of times. But, uh, yeah, I might need to get a truck that fits my needs a little bit more, which is unfortunate because I don't have a ton longer to pay on this, just a couple of years. But uh, if it's not going to do the job and I'm kind of constantly break it because I tow too much weight and stuff, it might be the smarter choice. So we'll see. We'll see what the finances look like next year and what the prices look like next year. Um. Uh, when I got this one, I probably would have got an F-250, but at the time, there was when they had no stock and all that other stuff, and they was one eighty thousand dollars for an F-150, so there's no way, I, I mean, that's what I paid for my F-250 the first time, so I wish I still had my F-250, that was my dream truck, so I know all the Chevy people are going to be like, ah, but I'm not a Chevy guy, I'm in a Chevy because of finances, <laughs> pretty much so we'll see we'll see what happens next year and we'll see how serious this is but it's definitely something i'm gonna have to get looked at here soon so uh all my mechanic people out there um give me some ideas of what you think it might be um, like i said uh, the u-joints and all that i've already checked i uh, had it balanced already um, tires rotated all of that so let me know what you uh, think it might be i talked to my uh stepdad yesterday about it or whatever and he had a couple of thoughts too and uh about some bearings and stuff like that so 
the transmission's not leaking or anything like that, so I'm not thinking that the seals and the rear end of the uh, transmission or anything like that's going out, or else it would be leaking, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of stumped at this point. But I'm gonna have to crawl up under there and take a good look around about it. And also, whenever I turn real sharp in this truck, it makes noise. Um, and the differential, you know, stuff up there with the four wheel drive and stuff. So maybe it's part of that. But the problem with that is, is it's in two wheel drive and all of that shouldn't be an issue at that point anyways. So I don't know. I'll figure it out though. I assure you that I do too much driving and stuff like that to have those type of issues. So, and I got quite a few trips coming up. Um, I got to go to Oklahoma to Biddy Boo's here soon for her birthday and also to uh, pick up the Harley and the tractors and the lawnmowers and all the other stuff and uh, celebrate her. I believe she's turning 55, I believe. Um, coming up very soon uh, in the next couple of weeks. And then also, uh, <clears throat> I'll probably be going to Missouri again uh, here in the near future as well. So I've got quite a few trips. Um, the Missouri trip, I might take the Jeep. It'll be the longest and furthest I've ever taken the Jeep. Uh, Fort Smith, about an hour away, is the longest that I've driven the Jeep. Just because I'm getting used to the Jeep and uh, seeing how dependable and stuff it is uh, before I try to take it long trip where I'll be heading is about five hours away so that's a pretty decent little trip ten hours each way but uh, I think I'm just about to the point that I'm confident enough to give it a shot it'll save me a lot of money and I don't have to tow a lot of stuff uh, back and forth for that trip so uh, I might jump in the Jeep and uh, give it a whirl see what happens but I'm coming into Russellville, guys, and it's been 17 minutes on here. I hope y'all are having an amazing Tuesday. Say something nice to somebody today, guys. It'll make a big difference in their day. And take a small step closer to your goal. I love every single one of y'all, but I always want y'all to keep it real. Come on.